Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about uh, how to build a time series analysis model and use it for the forecasting purpose. When you want to build a time series analysis model, you need to go through the following major four steps. The first one is to use the ACF and the PACF charts to identify which model we should build. Is it an AR model or an MA model or an ARIMA model? I have recorded a video to talk about how to use ACF and PACF chart. I list the video in this video's description section. If you haven't studied that video, please take a look at it. This is the first step. We use the ACF and the PACF to identify some possible models we want to build. Then we go to the second step. We use some uh, software package to identify the coefficients of the independent variables in order to build uh, a model. Plenty of uh, software packages are available for time series analysis. In this video, I will use the ASTSA package in the R software for the analysis. ASTSA represents Applied Statistical Time Series Analysis. This package has several advantages. For example, it's very easy to build a time series analysis model with this package. It doesn't require you to code a lot in order to build a model. But uh, it gives uh, very detailed results in the analysis report. For example, p-value for the coefficients, coefficient values, and uh, the error terms of the model. I will show you the process of using this package later in this video. The third step is optional. If multiple types of models could work, we want to compare the error terms of each model, and then eventually we want to choose the model with the smaller error terms. For example, according to our analysis of the ACF and the PACF charts, we find that we could either use a AR1 model or a MA1 model. So which model should we eventually choose? We look at each model's error term. We want to find the model with smaller error terms. And then we choose it for the forecasting purpose. This is the third step. The last step is to check the quality of our analysis model. We want to build a time series analysis model but uh, a time series analysis model is just a special case of a linear analysis. So the error terms of our time series analysis model should still follow a normal distribution with the mean being zero. After we get our model, we want to make sure that the error terms of our model still follows this requirement. Let's use an example to see how we can apply them. An analyst plans to use previous day's sales revenues to forecast today's sales revenue. I have listed the example dataset and the R script in this video's description section. You can download them onto your computer and then follow me to perform this analysis. Let's go to the R software. I have pre-typed the R scripts. So in this video, I will just uh, copy and paste them into the R software to show everyone the results. I also made some notations under each line of code. They can explain the purpose of each line. So I will not repeat them here. If you haven't installed the ASTSA package, please use the install.packages function to install it. Next, we want to use the library function to start the ASTSA package. So let's make a copy of the library line. Let's paste it into the R software. Press enter. The software, the package is ready to use. Next, we want to bring the source data into the R software. I will use the read.table function. I created a variable called salesDF. This variable will hold the source data. But at this moment, the type of salesDF is a data frame. Let's keep this in mind. 
CLSDF is a data frame. Later in this video, we need to transform a data frame into a time series data type. Let's take a look at what's inside CLSDF. Let's use the head function. So in this data frame, we have two columns, day and uh, sales. But uh, at this moment, this data table is a data frame. Let's use the TS function to transform a data frame into a time series data type. Now I create a new variable called uh, sales TS. I use the TS function to transform sales DF from a data frame to a time series data type. Now we can perform all kinds of uh, time series analysis. According to what we discussed in the ACF and the PACF charts lecture, the first step is to just present the source data in a chart so we can check if there is a long-term trend, either a decreasing trend or increasing trend existing in the source data. I will use the plot function. Let's make a plot on top of the sales TS variable we just created. This chart looks okay. There's no obvious long-term trend existing in the data set. So we don't have to do differencing at this moment. If you really, really want, you can try ARIMA with uh, one leg differencing or two leg differencing. But uh, as you can see later in this video, the error terms of ARIMA model with uh, one leg differencing are larger than other models. So using ARIMA with uh, one leg differencing or two leg differencing is really not a good option for this data set. At this moment, just remember, if there is no obvious long-term trend existing in the data set, we don't have to do differencing. Next, we can draw the ACF and the PACF charts in order to identify possible models we want to build. I will use the ACF2 function offered by the ASTSA package. ACF2 can draw ACF and the PACF charts at the same time. This is the result. Let's take a look at the PACF chart first. Looks like only leg one is significant, right? As you can see here. So according to PACF, we should consider building a AR1 model. Then let's take a look at ACF. Leg one, leg two, and leg three are all significant. So according to ACF, we can build either a MA1 or a MA2 or a MA3 model. But according to the principle of choosing a simpler model, MA1 is the model we should consider in priority. We have uh, two options according to the PACF and ACF charts, right? According to PACF, we should build an AR1 model. According to ACF, we should build a MA1 model. Some classmates may say, I want to combine them together. I want to build a, a ARMA 1.1 model. Can I do that? Yes, you can. But uh, later, you have to check the error term of the ARMA 1.1 model. If the error term is too large, we shouldn't consider ARMA 1.1. Let's build the models one by one. First, let's build the AR1 model. Actually, building a time series model is really simple in the ASTSA package we will be using the Sarima function. Let's take a look. As you can see here, Sarima. S represents seasonal. Sarima can not only process general time series analysis, but can also perform seasonality analysis. I will show you how to perform seasonality analysis in later videos. At this moment, let's remember the function name, Sarima. Sarima will take four parameters. First the parameter is the variable that holds the time series data. It's a sales TS we created, right? Second parameter is the order of AR model you want to build. 
If you want to build a AR1 model, you type in 1 here. If you want to build a AR2 model, you type in 2 here. The third parameter is the number of differencing you want to do on the source data. If you don't do any differencing, then you type in 0. If you want to do one-time differencing, you type in 1. If you want to do two-time differencing, you type in 2. The last parameter is the order of the MA model. Since we are just building an AR model, we are not building any MA model, so we give a 0 to the last parameter. Let's make a copy of the Serima function. This is the result. I copied the result into the point point. So let's go back to the point point to take a look at the results, how we can use them. Once we get the result, the first step is to look at the coefficient values. They are listed in the rectangle on this slide. We want to use these values to build the final AR model. There are two ways of building an AR model. You can choose either equation 1 or equation 2 to build the model. If you use equation 1, the only unknown factor is beta 0, the intercept of this equation. In the stationary data assumption lecture video, I talked about how to use beta 1 value and mu value reported by the software to calculate beta 0. Right? If you haven't studied that lecture, I listed the lecture in this video's description section. Please take a look at it, how we can calculate the intercept beta 0 value. But uh, some classmates may have a question. Can I avoid calculating beta 0? Can I use the results reported directly from the software to build an AR model? Yes, you can. You can use equation 2. Notice that in equation 2, we don't have an intercept beta 0 anymore. We only have a mu beta 1. And the mu value is under the x min column in the result. Beta 1 value is under AR1 column in the result. So once you plug in these two values into equation 2, you can get the same equation as you did by using equation 1. I want to leave this as an exercise for everyone to do after this class. You can use either equation 1 or equation 2 to build the model. You will find uh, the two equations are basically equivalent. Using the Serima function, you can build other types of models like uh, MA model and ARIMA model. In the point point, I showed everyone how to use the results from the software to build the final models. They are fairly easy to understand, so I will not repeat here. The next step is important. We can build multiple types of models, like a MA model or AR model or ARIMA model. Which one should we choose eventually for the forecasting purpose? We need to compare the error terms of each model. Let's take a look at it. You don't have to calculate the error terms by hand. They will be reported in the result. In practice, we really look at the squared sigma value, log likelihood value, AIC value, AICC value, and BIC value to measure the error terms of each model. AIC represents ICAC information criteria. AICC represents ICAC information criteria with corrections. BIC represents Bayesian information criteria. Since all of these values measure error terms of a model, we want these values to be as small as possible. If you compare AR1 to MA1, you can find that all of these values of AR1 are smaller. So we should choose AR1 for the forecasting purpose. The last step is important. We want to check the error terms of a chosen time series model. As I said at the beginning of this lecture, a time series analysis is a special case of a linear analysis. So no matter which model we choose, either AR or MA or ARIMA, the error terms of a chosen time series analysis model 
should still follow a normal distribution with the mean of the error terms being zero. In practice, we usually use the long box statistic to validate our hypothesis. We have two hypotheses. The null is the mean of the error terms is zero. The alternative is the mean of the error terms is not zero. In this case, do we want to keep the null or reject the null? We want to keep the null, right? Therefore, the p-value of the long box statistic should be greater than the chosen significant level. Let's say I choose 0.05 as the significant level. I use a blue horizontal dashed line to represent this significant threshold. I want the p-value of the long box statistic to be above this blue line. That means p-value is greater than 0.05. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we can make a conclusion that the mean of the error terms of the AR1 model is zero. Next, we want to check the ACF relationship of the error terms. They can be checked by the ACF of a residuals chart, as you can see on this screen. We want the ACF values to be non-significant for the error terms. If the ACF of error terms are significant, what does that mean? That means error terms are correlated, right? Our model, our chosen time series model, didn't fully explain the relationship between independent and dependent. That's why the error terms are correlated. But uh, if the ACF of the error terms are not significant, that means the error terms are random. They are not correlated. That means our chosen time series analysis model can fully explain the relationship between independent and the dependent. So it looks like uh, the AR1 model we built is good. Now we can use it for the forecasting purpose. It's very easy to do forecasting by using ASTSA package. We will be using the Sarima.4 function. 4 represents forecasting. This function will take uh, five parameters. The first one is still the time series data, the source data. The second parameter represents the days, the next few days you want to forecast for. If you want to forecast for today, you type in Y. If you want to forecast for today and tomorrow, you type in 2, and so on and so forth. The third parameter is the order of the AR model. We built an AR1, so we type in 1 here. The fourth parameter is the number of differencing you want to do on the source data. And the last parameter is the order of the MA model. Some classmates may have a question. If the Sorima function can give us the forecasted value, why do we need to use the Sorima function to find the coefficient? Some people prefer to build a mathematical model and then plug in the source data into the new model to do the forecasting. If you work with those people, you have to use the Sorima function to identify the coefficients of each independent and then build a model for them to use. But if you prefer, you don't want to build a mathematical model, you just want to see the forecasted value, then you can use Sarima.4 to make the estimation. Let's take a look at the result. I want to forecast the sales revenues for the next five days. So forecasted value are listed on the left, and they are also presented on the chart on the right. This is how you use the ASTSA package to build a time series model and use it for forecasting purpose.